Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Suzerain, a new role-playing, choose-your-own-adventure type text-based game, uh, where you play the role of a president of a uh, troubled country. We're in chapter two, so it's still sort of the early days of the presidency. I think it's out of four chapters, but it might actually be three. But it's still sort of the early days of the presidency. Um, we've recently sort of had a walk with our wife and agreed to uh, sort of remove a speaker of a major political event that's coming up in the not too distant future and we'll see how that plays out because we're essentially siding with our wife and our family in the issue of women's rights uh, but it does mean we may be angering uh, a speaker and a polit potential political ally who we may need so we'll see how that plays out i don't think we'll get to that in this episode but in this episode, we likely, toward the end, will get into sort of some interesting kerfuffles around uh, a gentleman's party that my vice president uh, may be setting up, and it may devolve into debauchery, but we'll see uh, how that plays out. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much for you. Uh, but this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, and uh, this is sort of part number eight of our Let's Play series of this game. I'm really enjoying it. It's a really interesting game. Uh, but that's all I've got for you. Let's just jump right back into the game, jump back into the live stream, and I'll catch you guys at the end. Discussion of changes to the tax system. Oh boy. We were at the top floor of the business council building, which had a great view of the beautiful Lock Haven. I looked outside for the, from the tall glass windows. The Moroccan Sea stretched as far as the eye could see, and it was dotted with many ships toward the horizon. They were mostly cargo ships carrying precious goods in and out of Swordland. Tracing back the paths of the ships, I looked at the harbor. Lockhaven was home to one of the largest harbors in the entire continent. Many dockyard workers were loading or unloading the containers. Work never stopped here. The doors opened. Simon, Mikal, and Edith entered the meeting room. Mr. President! Mr. President! So nice to see you again. Good afternoon, Mr. President. It's great to see you all again. Simon put down his bag on the table and started collecting his documents while the others slowly took their seats. Mr. President, before we start, I would like to mention some rumors that I heard. Vetoing the recent Workers' Rights Act was welcomed by a lot of business owners. The first section about the minimum wage would have been very damaging to the many corporations. I heard the same. A good decision, I say, especially during a recession. You're in no position... I don't care about the rumors. If someone wants to say something, they can say it to me directly. I wanted to sign it, but I had to make a call. You're in no position to evaluate my decision. I don't care about rumors. If someone wants to say something, they can say it to me directly. I mean, two and three sound unneedlessly rude, but one sounds like I kind of disagree with them. You have done the right thing. Simon waits patiently. Once everyone was ready, he adjusted his glasses. First of all, I would like to thank everyone here for work on our tax, sy tax system reform. We all know how complicated our current system is, and this work would be, wouldn't be possible without you. The ultimate goal here is to end the recession. Before we move ahead and start formulating a plan, we need to determine our direction, Mr. President. We have a few possibilities as a result of the work we have done so far. We can increase, maintain, or decrease the taxes for large corporations. I believe some of us in the room have a few strong opinions about this. In parallel, we can increase, maintain, or decrease the taxes for small and medium businesses. Let us start with large corporations. We'll move on to small businesses. What's the outcome if we increase taxes for large corporations? It's not an option at this point. Our economy is in shambles. Taking what, what's remaining from the businesses will destroy the econo economic economy further. We could balance it by decreasing taxes on small businesses to put some relief on them. I see. I'm not sure that's a good idea with the current state of our economy. I do believe there is one way to get out of the recession. It is through this trade and economic contribution of large corporations. Increasing their taxes will turn them on you. I will go a step further. Increasing their taxes will have disastrous results, and it will make you an enemy of them. Trust me, Mr. President. Nobody wants to make an enemy of them. Maybe you're right. What if we decry decrease taxes for large corporations? It's not an option at this point. Our state is broke. We are barely functioning with the help of the taxes. We could increase it by, or we could balance it by increasing taxes on small businesses. I see. I'm not sure that's a good idea with the current state of our economy. I think this is a great idea. Me too. You would have them on your side on top of solving the recession crisis, Mr. President. I 
They better try and stay on my good side. Is there any downside to keeping things the way they are? I'm of the opinion that if we don't make any changes, nothing will change. To stop the recession, we need to do something. Uh, all right, I'm ready to make a decision. We'll increase taxes for large corporations and balance it with decrease for small. Main tax, maintain taxes for large corporations. Decrease taxes for large corporations and balance the budget with an increase for small businesses. I hate all of these ideas. One will make his enemies, two won't fix anything, and three will fuck small businesses. Nationalize everything, make yourself CEO. Tax him! Have a strong opinion for once? Mr. Chacho, I have an opinion that all of these options suck. Everybody wants me to tax large corporations because fuck them. <laughs> I mean, I do hate big companies, but actually, yeah, just that. Tax the rich fucks. Tax the larger dudes. They can afford it. <laughs> tax them. Oh, boy. Eat the rich? Well, that might be a little extreme, Titus. Yeah, tax them all more should be really... Tax them all more should really be an option, Lake? I don't know about that. Small businesses struggle a lot as they as they are. Burn the rich? Investigate them for corruption? Uh... Guys, this is going to make a lot of powerful enemies if we do this. Should I rename the stream the... the the communist live stream? <laughs> the democratic socialist live stream. Screw corporatocracy, viva la revolution. You know, I haven't gone down the left wing path, so. Stop being Putin with less of a backbone. <laughs> Maybe just nibble the rich. <laughs> viva la, la revolution. Um. Yeah, I hate all these options. I hate all of these options. Young Thuggers, by the way, thank you very much for the gift sub to Red Rover Cat. Enjoy the emotes while you're here. I'm gonna go against the chat, guys. Here we're gonna we're gonna pull a modern American politics here. We're gonna decrease the taxes on large corporations. Uh, we'll give them subsidies for them to uh, to build stuff and pay them to uh, to have their companies located here. And is you know we'll just bend over. <laughs> An excellent decision. I agree. <laughs> uh, people will suffer. But anyway. <laughs> wow, pretty cavalier about that. Can I rethink my decision? Uh <sighs> That may have been a mistake. Oh, there's a lot of news articles. Young swords deny allegations. Torkin Hill School wins a war. Explosion in Deary. Detonation. Red Youth calls for peace. Earlier today, one of the leaders of the Red Youth spoke to the public and condemned the opportunists looting and violence taking place in cities across Swordland, saying it is not being done in the name of Bernard Cyrus. Rain is the new toy of the oligarchs. President display of incompetence. Tax cuts for large corporations is on the way. According to the information we've received, the administration has decided to decrease taxes for large corporations by 10% to a total of 25%. This comes as part of the tax reforms to stop the recession. This move will surely be welcomed by many large business owners, and we believe that this was a good move to curb the effects of the recession. After all, large corporations bring in more money into Swordland than their reason the recession is not worse than it already is today. This decision will definitely benefit Swordland in the long run. 
Smolong threatens new military incursions targeting BFF. Valen threatened to launch military operations into northern Valen to close the borders of Swordland. Smolong condemns Arcasian soldiers in Lesbia. Chancellor Hegel condemns military buildup in Lesbia. So there's a buildup millet. What? That's down to our south, by the way. Valen is obviously over here to the west. All right, well, let's, what's going on in Lake Krung? Briefing on the H3 highway construction issues. The H3 highway construction created a second opportunity to visit the seaside town of Lengkrug, known for its salmon. Thousands of people from the city were employed for the construction work by the new highway project. But the main purpose of our visit was to resolve the strike that began to endanger the deadline. The mayor welcomed us at his own mansion and took us on a brief tour of the city. We gathered at City Hall. Simon looked a little worried, but Leals was dead serious. There also was a message of support from the mayor of Avery, Eric Neal, who was grateful for the H3 investments. After dinner, we moved to a meeting room, Simon began. The strike that popped up at the construction site is causing issues. After, ter after the terrible Morble mine disaster, workers have been on edge. Vetoing the workers' rights bill certainly did not help the situation. Monaco 2.0. I'm I really am Putin without a backbone. The best tax cuts, bigly. It's probably the funnier path though. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true, War Given. Putin without the bribes? <laughs> we schedule the construction to finish sooner, but Taurus Holding might miss the target with the current trajectory. The bill is necessary for this country. Our people need to be compensated and have safety regulations. I think you have the power to pass it, which could help solve the protests. Alternatively, we could wait it out and let them get back to work. Why don't we just do what they want and pass the workers' right bill? I, that's what I just vetoed, you freaking moron. We could replace the striking workers. We can't stand idle. When we can't allow our stubbornness on laws to allow a few strikers to hold the construction. This will only serve to rile up the strikers even more. We might end up with a bigger mess. We need to show the people that we can finish this project, our first mega project on time. As much as I hate to say it, I think passing the workers' right bill might be our best bet. Absolutely not. I will not let a few strikers decide the future of our country. <laughs> We need to cut the head off the snake to truly stop the issue by replacing the strikers. Uh, I absolutely, absolutely not. I will not let a few. I will not let a few strikers decide the fate of the country. <laughs> Anti-labor, THG. I disagree. If we don't change our laws, this will lower the trust in our government and cause stability issues. One thing is for certain. Our administration must avoid working with Taurus in the future and opt for safe choices like SSC. Underhill could be a partner. I'm skeptical about another for-profit company. I didn't realize Lyles was like a leftist. Begin the procedures to pass the vetoed workers' right bill. I don't have the fucking money. Order Taurus to replace the strikers with new workers. This should fix our issue. Someone can THG a monocle for this playthrough? Uh... Spend what money? I don't have money. Liren. We get to go back over here. Visit and inspection of the schools in Liren. This must be the principal right this way, sir. 
The principal was a man of short stature with a busy mustache, or a bushy mustache, uh, and a pair of glasses. He approached us quickly, but was stopped by the security guards. They spart started patting down and searching him. That won't be necessary. Let him through. Principal. Principal Super Chacho. Mr. President, such an honor to meet with you. We shook hands and I turned around to smile for the cameras. Welcome to our humble school, Principal, Principal Super Chacho said. It's good to be here. Excellent. You must be Mr. Galad. It's a pleasure to meet you. And Miss Walda, so good for you to come all the way out here. Thank you. At the entrance, the school's motto was inscribed on the wall in giant letters. Principal Super Chacho said, Education is the premise of progress in all societies, in all families. <laughs> Looks more like a military institution than a school. Exactly. That's what we pride ourselves on. Discipline has the utmost importance in our school. Some discipline never hurt anyone. Sira bristled. Up to a point, perhaps. Look at these kids. Sarah doesn't like you, Super Chacho. <laughs> I can assure you that our students are very well educated. In fact, our school is one of the top ten middle schools in the entirety of Swordland. Now, we will watch the students take their daily student oath. A boy and a girl went up to the stage and grabbed their microphones. The students turned to them. I am a sword. My strength lies in my blood. I will respect the honor our honorable elders. I will protect the young. My life belongs to Swordland now, and it will belong to it forever. I will always follow the guiding light of Colonel Soul and the Great Swords. A Morgana Vescor Vecten Sisda. <laughs> oh boy. The school. Super Jacho, what kind of school are you leading here? Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, do we do nothing? Do we nod at the kids? Do we clap loudly? I'm not going to clap loudly. Like, like this is, this is a little bit nuts. So <laughs> yeah, right. Hamish are are we the baddies? <laughs> oh God. Nods at the kids. Give a nod unless you hate children. Okay. Well, I guess I nodded. I almost forgot the words, Lucian said, which proves the uselessness of this oath. No one ever remembers it after they graduate. If you wish to follow me, we will take a look at one of our classrooms. Through the hallways, we made our way to classroom 7A. As soon as I entered, the whole classroom rose up and snapped to attention. Sit down, please. These are our top students and our top class. This here is my son. Principal Super Chacho, tell me, Mr. President, what you want to be? Oh, tell Mr. President what you want to be. Mr. President, I want to be a general, sir. I am ready to sacrifice myself for my country and you, sir. This is nonsense. What are you teaching these students? You'll make a fine soldier in the future. At ease, General. I will do whatever I can to not let that happen. Uh, what? Please touch my son, Mr. President. <laughs> this is absurd. <laughs> um, recruit him as a child general. Uh, Mustafa at a sword. I'll do whatever I can to not let that happen. Thank you, sir. The principal squeezed his son's shoulders as the boy looked up and smiled to his father. He patted him on the back and sent him back to his seat. The cameras flashed. This is simply ridiculous. You're raising soldiers here, not students. I'm so sorry. I will medi immediately perform disciplinary actions. Uh, how about you, young lady? What do you think about this? She's our top student in the school. Her excellent grades are... I didn't ask you. What do you think about your school? Just between us girls. I, I'm sick of having to knit and sew while the boys learn science and chemistry. I'm smarter than all of them. Why do I have to take these stupid handcraft classes? 
Shut up. Let her speak. Uh, my math and reading scores are the best in the school, but they won't let me take the classes I want. Just because I'm a girl. I want to be a scientist, not some soldier's wife. <laughs> you need some loyal cabinet ministers, even if they're children. Wow! Please, Mr. President, slap the student. <laughs> Mr. Sir Super Chacho, you're really getting into your role as principal, right? You heard her, Mr. Pre principal. Will you make the necessary changes at once? But knitting and sewing are important skills to have. We need more people like you in this country. I applaud your determination. Uh, make the changes at once. Do you hear? I will personally check back and ensure that the changes are made. Yes, sir. The camera slashed once again. Take that down. Don't say anything. An excellent portrait of Colonel Sol. Very lifelike. Super Chacho, I don't agree with your absurd statements. What do we say? An excellent portrait of Colonel Soul, very lifelike. This makes me very wishy-washy, right? Like, be like, oh, make sure that women have equal rights, but then, like, also the, the old general figure, hero guy, like, don't, you know, don't do anything versus him. <laughs> I did this to you? Hey, Super Chacha, you're the principal, not me. Um... I just won't say anything. I'll ignore the portrait. Lucien, let's leave. Thank you for the tour. Very well. Very well. Vectum Sista. We got another thing in this town? Briefing on the proposal of education reform. Aside from the necess necessity of child soldiers, Super Chacho says, we need to build some gulags. Woof, that's a little extreme. Lucien was seated across from me at the table. Going through the documents, Sira entered the room. After the visit yesterday, I couldn't even sleep thinking about the little boy and girl. I've never been more sure of my intention to reform our education system. Lucian took off his reading glasses and put it on the table. I agree educational reform is necessary. I don't see what's wrong with our education system. <laughs> I'm in debt. I can't afford bullets for my child soldiers. <laughs> All right. Those students have to repeat that same soulless propaganda every single day. They're being brainwashed in age when their minds need to be free. On top of that, young girls are denied the same opportunities as the boys. They're forced into the role of housewives before they even reach puberty. Nothing's changed since I went to school. Women like me, Lyles, Nia, even your wife. We had to st Even my w Excuse me, Sarah, but my wife is exceptional. So don't refer to her as even your wife. We had to study twice as hard to receive the same university education that you and Lucian took for granted. Is that the kind of country you want your daughter to grow up in? Mr. President, we need to bring change. We need to free the minds of these young people. They are our future. Very well. What do we need to do for an education reform? We need to keep politics out of the curriculum. Uh, that seems a little bit over the top. Soul should only be viewed as a historical figure. Children shouldn't have to repeat his name every day. This is actively poisoning young, bright minds instead of thinking for themselves. They're learning to take things at face value. Or, yeah. We also need to ensure boys and girls receive the same instruction. Handcrafts like knitting and sewing should be taught to both sexes, or not at all. 
Swordland's youth must be technically skilled and capable for the next decade. That won't be possible with the amount of nationalistic indoctrination and narrow-minded thinking found in our schools today. Either we raise a generation for the chill challenges of the future or not. What will it be, Mr. President? Lucien, what do you think? As much as I respect Colonel Soul, his time has passed. Now is our time. I do think this might be the first step of a larger plan. Reform the education system. You will not regret it. I will get to work immediately. Now that that decision was made, let us move on. Very well. After the budget increase, the ministry quickly began formulating plans on how to effectively use the money. But before moving forward, the question of keeping education fully state-funded or allowing new private schools remains open. Tell, tell us about the benefits of allowing private schools. I've made my opinion clear. I'm against it. But it would give us additional funds for education while increasing competition. It would support our overall economic strategy of promoting a market economy. We have enough money to improve education in Swordland. We do not need to com complicate things further with a privatized incentive. So what's your decision? Initiate privatization to draw more funds that should allow for more competition and quality. Keep education solely a matter of the state. We need to prevent interference from private interests. I'm going to go with a slight privatization. We'll still allow public education and we'll be able to fund it more adequately, but we'll take some of that burden off us by privatizing some of this. Now, this may drive some of the money into private education, but as long as we're still taxing everyone evenly across the board, we should be able to allow for some high quality education through the state as well. Will do. That should be it for now. I'll get to work and report back later. This has been a very productive day. I will be returning to Holsword. Thank you for your time. Uh, I believe that boys and girls should receive the same treatment. Bayonet combat drills, Pascal Barr says. Uh... Okay. Back to Whole Sword we go. I'll read the report from Whole Sword. Ministry of Education has started work on education reforms. Good. That's what I told you to do. United Cortana launches a second satellite. Intelligence reports United Cortana has successfully launched a second satellite, which has the capability of radio communications. This means that United Cortana radio communications will be able to be transmitted through a satellite for the first time ever, a technology that no other country currently possesses. Meeting with Gloria Tory on planned reforms. I arrived at the Grand National Palace, which was only f a five-minute drive away from the palace. Today I had a private meeting with Gloria Tory, one of the leading figures of the USP, to get her approval for the proposal. She was also key in reaching the 150 signatures to propose the new constitution, as she had extensive control over our party's conservative and moderate wings. We walked into the corridors of the Grand National Assembly. I was confronted by the memories of the historic building. Despite being a member of the Assembly not long ago, it now felt like a distant past. I walked into the left wing of the assembly, which currently acted as the quarters of the USP. Gloria's office was the first one inside. I knocked on the door and entered. Good morning, Miss Tory. Good to see you here, Mr. Rain. It was a small, neatly organized office. There were small figurines, photos, and plants around the, pal the place. It had a homely feel, contrary to what my room felt like back in the day. On her gesture, I took a seat. The chair was very uncomfortable. How are you doing today, Mrs. Tory? I'm fine, Mr. Rain. How are you? I'm good now that I've seen your face. Mrs. Tory, it's been a while. Indeed, Mr. Rain. So how does the presidential chair compare to the ones in the assembly? The chair is fine, but the work that comes with it is insane. Well, you knew about that. Day, didn't you? Anyways, let's keep this simple, Mr. Rain. 
We both know why you are here. You want me to give you my support. I checked out your proposal in detail, and even though I do not find the changes too important, I like the overall draft. I can get you the signatures needed for the proposal. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to the conservatives. I hope there won't be any surprises, though, Mr. President. Your lack of faith in me is disappointing. I assure you, there's nothing that should be concerned about. Uh, what surprises? We have, c we have to calculate every possibility, Mr. President. After all, I do not see eye to eye with your other policies. Especially the continuation of Alfonso's free market reforms. You have seen the recession. It proved that this experiment doesn't work. But anyway... I'm positive that I can get you the signatures, but I can't vouch for all the conservatives of the party to vote for the constitutional changes. But that still depends on your policies, Mr. President. I have no problems with the proposal, and you have my word I will help you get this out. Which policies make you concerned? I'm completely against your privatization efforts regarding our educational institutions. The state must be responsible for educating its citizens. Your reform will also result in corrupting our education and bringing foreign influence. But anyway, that's another topic. What we expect from you is not to pursue further privatization. Uh, it will happen one way or another. I'm not Alfonso. I can't promise anything. These decisions depend on circumstances. Don't worry. That won't happen. <laughs> That's a good point, Super Chacho. <laughs> that, that is a pretty good point, actually. The historical Sean Connery. That is, that is not the voice I'm going for, just to be clear. <laughs> Three, be vague. You're really going to be president wishy-washy? Like, no, my, my, my campaign promise is to privatize. That is my campaign promise. Never agree to anything ever. Ouch. Ah. I'm not Alfonso. Yes, different time. Different names, I guess. Whoa! Anyhow, it was nice meeting you, Mr. President. But now I need to get back to my duties. If you'll excuse me, Mr. President. Goodbye, Mrs. Tory. Thank you. She totally blew me off. So no other, no other geographic items to look at or call out or anything like that. By the way, our budget apparently went back up to zero, I'm guessing, after I did the privatization of the education system. So this is the other individual. He is, uh, I'm trying to get the reformist wing to support my proposals. Radical neutrality. Mr. President, welcome. The whole room was surrounded by bookshelves packed with files and papers. It was a small office with books and dossiers lying on every corner. It felt claustrophobic. On his gesture, I took a seat. How's everything going, Mr. Calvin? It's been busy. The party's been working very hard, Mr. President. Thank you for asking. How's it going in, your pal in the palace? I'm feeling pretty good. That's great to hear. Our team was disappointed by the veto of the Workers' Rights Act. We worked day and night for weeks. It would have boosted your public opinion too, Mr. President. It wasn't a good time for drastic change, which would also cost the government. The businesses would be burdened even further. In this climate, it would damage the economy. Either way, your efforts were appreciated by the palace. It is a market economy with a free supply and demand system. The government shouldn't overregulate. The businesses would be burdened even further. In this climate, it would danger, or it wouldn't, it wasn't a good time for a drastic change, which would also cost the government. It never is. Not sure how this will reflect on public opinion. I wouldn't imagine positively. It's just that we thought the palace wouldn't let us down. Anyway, sir, let's talk about the proposal. Thanks for coming here for my input, because thing, there are some subjects where Glory and I don't see eye to eye. I hate to say that most of the progressives were already starting to warm up to you. 
Your attempt at changing the Constitution created quite a bit of excitement. One could dare say that say an excitement that hasn't been felt since the 30s. Yet, there are some issues with the current status of the draft proposal, so we may need to contain our excitement a little longer. I suspect Mrs. Tory had a lot of influence on this proposal, but I cannot support this in the, its current state. I need your support, Mr. Clavin. A fact that I am aware of. But at this point, even my support wouldn't be enough. What do you mean? The proposal will we'll have a hard time getting the support in its current status. You surely know this. Reformists were expecting a reform about term limits. Why is that not included in the proposal? That wasn't a priority. What is a priority for you, Mr. President? Limiting legislative powers of the Supreme Court. Balance and division of powers. Bringing down the constitution of soul. You should have read our manifesto. Aren't we the maybe president? Four. You guys are one minute to be like, fuck you, dude. No? Really? That's what we're going with? We're going four? Empire of Men's Stories, by the way. Thank you for the follow five minutes ago. Balance and division of powers, I think. That's really what I'm trying to go for. Fair enough. There might still be a way for me to get behind this. We can take another look over the draft, or perhaps there's something else you could offer me. Uh, is he asking for a bribe? Because I don't have any money. I mean, Gloria's already said I can't change anything, right? <laughs> you think it's sex? <laughs> well, let's see what he has to say. How about a position in my cabinet? If you give us your support, you'll be my VP next cat. You'll be my VP next cabinet. <laughs> this isn't actually corruption. This is just political bartering at this point. How about a position in my cabinet? I think we can achieve a lot if we lead together. Well, if you promise me the position of vice president, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I can't do that. That's a shame. I'm sorry to say there's nothing I can do for you, Mr. President. Good luck with uniting the party under your reforms, but I guess you'll be uniting the party against you like this. I mean, Peter is a problematic VP. I did think about it, but. I'll be expecting the reformist support, Mr. Clavin. We'll see you, Mr. President. After all of that, I'm still like, I'm expecting your support. Uh. Brothers and sisters of United Swordland, I came here to announce the agenda for the future of our country. The people of Swordland have spoken. I don't know what to go with on this one. Our systems and institutions have been have increasingly become undemocratic. The Supreme Court is blocking the future of Swordland. <laughs> You're already a disaster, so go full dictatorial. No, Super Chacho.
The people of Swordland have spoken. They blame our institutions and our systems for want and want change. Can you blame the people? Haven't we had enough with the flaws of our constitution? We must listen to their wishes and get their trust in Swordland back. I brought attention to democracy and why we must write a more democratic constitution. I explained how our proposals will fix the issues. The left side of the hall, where Albion sat, started applauding. Later, I explained the contents of the new constitution and asked for their full support for the proposal. I'm not going to threaten them. The conservatives on the right side of the hall, where Gloria sat, stood up and started clapping loudly after I saw Gloria making a gesture with her hands. I saluted everybody in the room one last time, and I bid them farewell before leaving the stand. I walked outside the assembly and back into the palace. Do a purge. <laughs> this isn't a dictatorship, guys. See, I'm trying to make it not one. Oh, what's this up about Rumberg? Read the reports from Rumberg. Queen Beatrice Livingston calls for, called Swordland a threat to world peace. Queen Beatrice Livingston appeared on TV to call Swordland not just a threat to peace in eastern Maricopa, but a threat to peace in the entire world. She condemned the riots and police violence in Swordland, also expressing her worries that the direction Swordland is headed, she urged Rumbergian army to secure the southern border, citing violence incidents in northern Swordland. Okay, okay, I see how it's going to be, Rumberg. We'll have to deal with you. Jesus, Rumberg's big. What about the news? What does the news say? President meets the USP. Today, President Rain has met with his party members in the party meeting in the Grand National Assembly of Swordland, where the current situation of the country and future plans of the party were likely discussed. It was later reported that President Rain used the meeting to give a speech to the party and announce the contents of the first draft of the new constitution. The details of the meeting were not made public, nor what the draft contained. All right, I guess we're moving forward. Balance of power in Eastern Maricopa. So we're going foreign policy now, right? Still chapter two, though. Uh, archaic state of Sirland's conscription laws. Dear reader, I ask you this. What year are we in? 1880? 1920s? The matter I'm writing to you about is the, of course, mandatory military service again. In times where there are no active wars, why do we still need to have these archaic conscription laws? Let me answer that. It is because someone profits from it. Not only does this make the warmongering solace happy, it also works out for large defense corporations. The oligarchs are now swimming in money, while we still have to send our children away when they come of age. We are in the modern age. If we want to modernize Swordland and catch up to the superpowers, if we want to lose this militaristic identity so that we can intellectually proper prosper, mandatory conscription laws need to go. Shouldn't we be banning papers like this? Rain to meet with Smolks and Van Hortsen. Sordland is embarking on a great geopolitical gamble with a new trade initiative organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay. So we basically get to either go to Valen or to Agnolia. Agnolia is our friend and they want some trade deals that'll make their economy better and perhaps a slightly weaker but uh, Valen is unstable and uncertain, so that's sort of the situation we find ourselves in. Arcasia offers aid. Arcasia has reached out to us and offered aid in return for Air Force access? Uh-oh. I don't know that I want to deal with that yet. <laughs> religious Harmony Bill. Sign or veto the Religious Harmony Bill that was approved by the Grand National Assembly. For the purpose of increasing religious harmony and unity, the following laws are established in religious affairs. Section 1 of the RHB will ensure that the Day of Dissension ceremony in the Ark Sanctuary of Dyer shall from now on only hold sermons in Swordish language. Section 2 will forbid sanctuaries from holding sermons in Bludish unless they receive approval from the Ark Archpriest of Swordland. Section 3 will enforce that all priests applying to state sanction to have Swordish descendants to be able to receive their salaries and pensions. Oh my god! No! No! 
This is going to piss off everybody in the fucking USP because they've passed this. But I don't want theocratic nationalism. That's a... No! We are one nation. We are swordish. We are blutish. We are all peoples. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'm going home. President Vito. You'd love to see me play the political process? <laughs> uh, maybe. I was thinking, by the way, the other day, this game has everything except religion. Well, apparently now it does. Arcasia offers aid. The foreign ministry of Arcasia has offered a substantial amount of financial, logistical, and equipmental support to help our country. In return, Arcasia requests refuel and repair access to the Ilroy Air Force Base whenever they require. President Dweller Walker has sent personal assurances that this agreement is for peaceful purposes only. Well, do we come do we become a pawn in the game of global superpowers? Or do we maintain our independence at the cost of cash? Let war commence. Well, I don't think having uh, having them in our country is going to make war more likely. Take the money. I buffed the military to stay independent. Play both sides and accept. It'll give me sanctuary against Rumberg, but at what cost? At what cost? I am independent of these foreign meddlers. I am independent from the superpowers. I shall lead Swordland forward as an independent superpower, charting our own destiny. And yes, I'm not on screen, but I, ra I said that with a raised fist. <laughs> Ouch, Super Chacho. President Rain protects religious freedoms. President Reigns has recently vetoed the outrageous religious harmony bill. The bill was aiming to limit freedoms of bluish people in Swordland. The MP proposed this bill was, of course, Kiso Kilbner, the leader of the NFP himself. Mr. Kilbner has never stopped his attacks on the Belush people, and we are sure he will continue his contentious uh, onslaught and his attempts to further divide the country. President Reign's decision to veto this misogynistic bill, which was a clear attack on religious and personal freedoms, will be welcomed by bloods and swords alike. Hey, the, the radical likes me. That means I must have done something wrong. Uh... There's two super chachos? A call from Gus Manager, Office of the President. I was sipping my first cup of coffee for the day when the phone lit and up and rang. I swore under my breath. I thought my schedule was clear for at least half an hour. I picked up the phone. Gus Manager. Mr. President, how are you doing on this fine day, I might ask? Fine. As well. Fine as well. You? I was doing well until you gave me a call. I'm good, Bus because business in Swordland is running as usual from my end. Thanks for asking. I'm calling you because I received a call from the CEO of Armadine Industries, Aaron Bridges, about the recent initial public offering on the Venture Stock City Stock Exchange. As you might have guessed, it's about our little venture investment of 1,000 shares worth nearly a million ren. I'm very pleased to say that we have made gains. The shares have doubled in price at the IPO and the VCSE, and we will soon receive the profits made from the investment. Isn't that great? Great news. So how much do we gain? You will love it. In total, we have made nearly 2 million Sordish Ren. I bet that right now you are wishing you had bought more stocks earlier, right? Uh, it was a good, it was good for a start. Uh, it was good for a start for sure. It definitely was. I assure you that this will pale in comparison to what we'll do together in the future. The money will be transferred to your personal bank account shortly. 
Keep me up to date on other opportunities. We'll let you know immediately when new opportunities arise. Goodbye for now. Heck yeah, we're going to get two wealth back for our personal wealth fund. That was not insider trading, by the way. I didn't even invest in a, a company inside our, com our country. We invested in a company that made personal radios that was located in Arcasia. And we saw a news article that said they were the first to do this. Also, if I had not, if I had invested more, I wouldn't have been able to afford to send my driver's kid to school. So it's good we invested what we invested. Private party of the gentlemen's club? <laughs> oh God, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a problem. Briefing on the status of immigration regulation. We were in the middle of a meeting on the palace about our plan for the immigration policy. The ensuing discussion quickly became heated. I don't think so, Mr. Whiskill. It just doesn't make any sense to me that a foreign citizen should come before a sort of citizen in Swordland. Well said. My analysis is also in line with this, especially during the economic recession. We're living, we're giving sordish jobs to immigrants from other countries. What about our own people? Immigrants are the reason our economy is not in a state that is unsalvageable. Look at the Angolian immigrants in Eggland. They have revitalized that whole region, not just because they've been boosting the economy of the entire country. I can't read. Statistically speaking, allowing the immigrants to become part of the workforce contributes to our economy, but I agree that the current situation is very nuanced. We can't just tighten our immigration policies and expect the economy to stay the same. We need to pull, put the economy in recession at the forefront. Gentlemen, can we please get back on topic? Look at the superpowers. Do you see them closing off their borders? Why do you think they have such large economies? They are in their current state because they welcome immigration and use it to their advantage. We need to consider the impact on the economy. Our money flow should be our utmost concern if we want to have the capability to do actual change. We need a decision, but before we move on, Mr. President, do you have any questions about the current state of immigration? What's the current legal status of immigration? How many immigrants live in Sordland? How do immigrants usually arrive here? I don't have any questions. Let's move on to solutions. I don't have any questions. Let's move on to solutions. During the elections, we promised to tighten immigration laws. Of course, as you know, I was and am still against it. If we tighten our immigration, what does it entail? Thank you for the follow, Zoop Dog and Opulence Three Ten. Also, TC Armored, thank you for the follow. Stability draws money. Stability? What stability? There are already issues between our citizens and immigrants popping up all over because of this. In, co in contrary, the only way we can achieve stability is through tightening the immigration. Ah, what do we do? We can either fail our election promise by leaving immigration lax, but potentially helping the economy, or we can tighten immigration, but that could make us less favorable with foreign powers as well as, um, as, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think I should do? Who keeps election promises? Lull. Shoot them all. Well, that's not an option, <laughs> XZ. Keep the promises, keep the job. 
Wow, Super Chacho. Wow. We will tighten immigration laws. I'll sign the decree soon. So be prepared. It's not against, uh, <laughs> Titus groan, silence. No opposition is allowed. We can't let internal policies be decided by foreigners. Swordland always comes first. Disappointing, really. Thank you for your contributions. Keep up the good work. The country's gonna collapse in a 12-way civil war. I may not be very consistent. That is certainly possible. All right, what's going on? Oh, private party at the Gentleman's Club. Peter! Far from becoming accustomed to my workload as president, I only felt more and more snowed under as the weeks passed. It had been ages since I had any time to myself. I was starting to lose my focus, and my temper was growing increasingly thin. Peter was the first to realize I needed a break. After much cajoling, he finally persuaded me to come to a meeting of his new venture, Gentleman's Club. Oh, God. For the past few months, he'd been hosting a salon of sorts. Not just for politicians and businessmen, but for also for artists, entertainers, and perhaps of people of taste. He told me with a smile on his face. There was only one rule. No wives or girlfriends allowed. Hence the name. Oh, God. Is he freaking Caligula or something? As soon as I found myself in front of his new luxury villa in Ellery, very loud jazz music emanated from inside. I waited and waited. Finally, Peter opened the door. I could smell the whiskey on his breath. Anton, finally, the real party can start. Come on in. As soon as I entered, Peter closed the door and turned to the small crowd. Gentlemen, a minute of your time, please. I now have the privilege to present to you the man himself, the fourth president of Swordland, Mr. Anton Rhine. I'd known him for long enough to understand that he was more than a little drunk. He made an elaborate mock curtsy as I passed him and walked into the room. The music stopped and I felt everyone's eyes on me. Thank you, Peter. What's next? A chorus? A marching band? And I present to you, Peter Vector, the first alcoholic vice president of Sorland. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. What's next? A chorus? A marching band? No, I'm saving those for your funeral. Peter laughed very hard at his own grim joke before continuing. Dear members, please give us a warm welcome to our very special guest, if I may. Anton, here, take this. He handed me a glass of whiskey and put his head on my shoulder. We all know why we're gathered here tonight, to celebrate life, to have a brief escape from our tumultuous professions. I personally don't know any better cure for stress than a little drink. Only a little one? A few people in the crowd chuckled, then some raised their glasses. Now, the tradition dictates as the club president, I have to remind you of our house rules. There are three. No politics, no wives, no one sober. Cheers! Sip you whiskey. Anton Rain might have the power to make presidential decrees, but I, Peter Vector, the president of this club, now declare this party started. Music go. <sighs> okay. Yeah, we probably should have offered that reformers guy the VP. 
Let me show you around. We walked around the corridors of his mansion. Statues and paintings lined the stair, stark white walls. An arched uh, window provided a view of the neatly manicured grounds, complete with a swimming pool. A grand lesbian marble staircase led up to the second story. Pater gestured at the massive crystal chandelier hanging overhead. That chandelier was made in the 18th century. Can you believe it? There's even a... How did he get all this freaking money? How are you paying for all of this, Pater? I'll let you on in a secret. Gus Manager has a lot of context in real estate. He brokered a good deal for me. He'll also be here tonight. I can introduce you if you like. Do you think he could arrange a deal for me as well? What did you promise in return? Only my money. We continued walking until we circled blah blah blah. It's amazing, but I hardly call it a hideaway. More like a palace. Definitely does rival yours. Anyways, let's get back to the party. I arranged for some ca or I arranged for some caviar to be brought in from Laspasia. You're going to love it. Oh God. Cocktail waitresses were carrying around plates of canopies, wearing dresses that left little of the imagination. So this is what you've been hiding from Edlin? I thought this was a gentleman's club. Gesture at one of the waitresses to come over. You guys just want me to get in trouble with my wife. I'm already a bad president. Might as well be a bad husband. Uh, whoa. No, no, no. <laughs> so this is what you've been hiding from Evelyn. No one's hiding anything. She knows about these gatherings. He averted my gaze for a second before calling over one of the waitresses. She was in her mid-twenties, wearing red lipstick, her blonde hair neatly tied into a ponytail. On her plate were toast points slathered in lesbian caviar. I took a bite. It was rich, salty tasting of pure seaside. I could almost hear the sound of the waves. Lesbian caviar, best in the world, I'm telling you. Anton, there are few pleasures in life that are this... As the waitress left us to serve another attendee, she flashed a quick smile at Pater over her shoulder. He smiled back, a little too broadly. Sensual. His eyes were still fixed on her, with an expression I remembered from our many nights out together as students. Oh, look, there's Gus. Why don't you go talk to him? I'll be back shortly. Pater, I'm warning you, don't make a mistake. Where are you going? <sighs> I did promise I was going to talk to... No, I, I thought I... <sighs> Peter, I'm warning you, don't make a mistake. Mistake? What are you talking about? I'm just going to the washroom. I'll be back before you know it. Mr. President, a toast to our new member, everyone. You don't seem all that surprised to see me here. How long have you been a member? I heard this mansion is a result of your connections. You don't seem surprised to see me here. That's because Peter told me you'd be coming. Take the cigar. We went out to the balcony. All of Ilroy was at our feet. From this vantage point, I was able to see how expansive the building plot was. The swimming pool and the hedge maze were visible from here. Leaning over the railing, I admired the view from the moment before Gus spoke up. I know you're all wondering about the deal Pater made. In a nutshell, thanks to my network, he was able to procure this house for half the asking price, which would have been impossible under any other circumstances. I would be delighted to discuss a similar arrangement with you. In fact, I've prepared a document with my own personal favorite opportunities. This is the least I can do since you have been, a, you have been generous to many business people in the country. I'm not looking to make any investments at the moment. What's in it for you? I'm glad my investment decisions are paying off. Thank you. 
Oh no. Say it with me, children. Corruption is epic. No corruption. Remember, like, blackmail, right? Sure, I'm sure there's a stabbing option. Uh, oh, I'm glad my investment decisions are paying off. Cheers to investments paying off, then. My first offer is, of course, real estate. There's a vineyard close to Elroy, about one hour drive from here, that includes a very large villa, a beautiful plot, but rather neglected, so there would be a fair amount of renovation costs. On the bright side, you would be able to produce your own wine. The previous owner was Gurit of Rubery, a world-renowned vineyard. There's also the option of a football partnership. I already own a large portion of Enrica FC, and I'm doing my best to make them champions. Buying in would be more expensive than the vineyard, but the season will bring a lot of returns, I'm quite positive. Give me the word and I'll start procurement process, but we must act quickly as these op options might soon disappear off the market. Ooh, a vineyard would be nice. Mm hmm. On second thought, I don't want this now. Very well. Do not blame me if they're not available at a later date. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to refresh my drink. See you around. I looked down and saw a silhouette. Two silhouettes, actually, so close together they seemed to be entangled. I squinted and tried to get a better look. It was definitely two people kissing, but I couldn't see either of their faces. I returned to the party and spent some time mingling with the other guests engaging them in small talk about their businesses, their children, their relationships. Around an hour later, Pater showed up next to me. See, I told you I'd be back before you knew it. Was that you in the hedge maze? What are you talking about? I told you I went to the washroom. Around the same time you were gone, I saw two people kissing in the maze. I will be direct. Were you kissing the waitress? What? No. How could you think that? I am a married man. You know that you can tell me anything. Hey, you can have her if you want her. Anyway, want a drink? Because I do. He poured us two large glasses of whiskey and we drank them in one go through the party. We drank and drank, just like old times. Ooh, the red lipstick on Peter's collar. The vice president's having an affair. <laughs> oh, wow. Young Thuggers, you want me to take him on a hunting trip and give him the Dick Cheney special? Ouch. That might be a little bit extreme. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for yet another episode of Suzerain, a new uh, political RPG type choose your own adventure game. Uh, we got through uh, the Gentleman's Club party with our vice president, Peter. He seems to be a problematic sort, uh, and we'll see how that plays out in the future episodes if that gets in the way of our reign. But with that being said, that's going to do it for tonight's episode. Hope you guys did enjoy, uh, and well, I guess today's episode, depending on when you're watching it. But I hope you guys did enjoy the episode. Let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.